The M3 MacBook Air has a big problem, but what if I told you that it could actually be faster than a 14 inch MacBook Pro? See, ever since Apple went fanless with the MacBook Airs, we have been tracking thermal throttling, and that's when the computer gets so hot that it starts to slow down. But with the M1 chip, it wasn't too bad. With the M2, it got worse. And now that we have this powerful three nanometer M3 chip, things are getting to a whole nother level. And now that Apple allows you to have two external displays when you put it into clamshell mode, things got even worse. And that is because when the lid is closed, that heat is trapped inside instead of dissipating. Now in this video, I did a few different things. I ran multiple tests to show you guys differences and then I got some thermal pads, which are very cheap. I'll link them down below. And that allows the heat to transfer instead of being stuck inside of the air gap because the actual chip and the little metal covering doesn't touch the chassis. And with that, I also tested out this beast from Svalt, which is a small company out of Portland that designs and makes these MacBook coolers. And I think you're gonna be really shocked with the performance. Now, if you take a look at this test from the 14 inch MacBook Pro with M3, you'll see that our performance in this 20 minute stress test is practically flat. Even after 20 minutes of 100% GPU load, our lowest score was just less than 2% of a difference from the first run. And that is because this guy has a fan built into it to keep it cool. It's also heavier and thicker as well. But when we look at the same chip in the MacBook Air, you see that the first run was roughly the same. And then into the second run, we're already losing performance. And as the Mac heats up at around six to seven minutes, we have a big dip in performance. And by the end of the 20 minute test, we lost almost 30% of the performance. And this is just using the graphics. Now, if you think that's bad, look at this. I'm switching over to clamshell mode and switching back and forth. You guys can see how much more performance we lose with the lid closed. We actually got to a stability score of 52.1%, meaning that almost half the performance is lost after 20 minutes. That is insane, the difference that you can get between a MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. And now let's go ahead and fix this. But first, if you're buying a new machine, I would recommend getting a good multi-port charger like the Nexode Pro 65 watt from our sponsor, Ugreen, because the one that comes with this new MacBook Air is only a 30 watt charger, which doesn't support fast charging. This one puts out 65 watts, which is enough to fast charge the new MacBook Airs from zero to 51% in just 30 minutes, especially thanks to their Air Pyra and Ganfinity Tech, which helps it stay super small and portable compared to Apple's chargers, which makes it great for travel, especially since it has three ports so you can charge three devices at once, like your MacBook, iPad, and iPhone. It's also got wide compatibility, so it also supports Samsung's 45 watt super fast charging 2.0. And if you need more power, they also have their 160 watt version with four ports, which is perfect for fast charging the 16 inch MacBook Pro and multiple devices. And you can order one of Ugreen's Nexode Pro chargers today by using the link in the description and the pinned comment below. So now let's get to fixing the MacBook Air. I'm gonna start out with showing you guys the result from the Svalt heat block right here. And I'll link it down below. This is not a sponsored product. And you can not only use this with the MacBook Air, but they designed it for MacBook Pros as well to help keep those running cool and quiet. Here's the result using clamshell mode. You guys see that horrendous performance that we're getting and just placing the MacBook on the heat block brings back almost all of our performance. Right here, we're at 89.7, and you guys could see that our performance is almost completely flat. Even after 20 minutes, we have only lost about 10% of the performance, and it's gonna stay right around there. And that is impressive compared to that clamshell mode where you're literally getting performance of the M1 Air in 2024. Now that is not all, they also have 
fans, which you can place next to this to get some airflow going. So setting that fan up and running this test again brings us to 97.3% stability score. We have just a little high, which in fact, if you look at the numbers, the best loop score is now quite a bit higher and the lowest score is only 5% off from the best run that we got running it open like this. So that is a really good improvement. That's less than a 4% difference compared to the thicker, heavier MacBook Pro that has a fan. Now, some people might ask, why would you get something like this and try to cool down the system instead of just buying a MacBook Pro? Well, for one, it is more expensive, it's thicker, it's heavier, and you might wanna have this larger display and a much thinner device that is lighter on the go, but when you're gonna get down to your desk and you wanna be able to use it with the display and get some serious work done, you don't have to compromise with your performance. But I said that you can actually make it faster than the MacBook Pro, and you can. Let's keep going. The next thing I did was opened up the MacBook, which is easy to do, and grabbed these cheap thermal pads and placed them right over where the M3 chip is. Now this bridges that air gap between the chip and the body and allows that heat to spread out to the bottom. Now some people have said that this will make your battery get too hot, but this is not true because Apple monitors it and if you're gonna be charging your MacBook, the batteries actually get hotter than when using it with thermal pads. My first test was running it open, and here are my original results, losing almost 30% performance. And with thermal pads, you guys could see how we have very flat performance right away up until the six, seven minute mark, and barely losing performance up to 10 and 11 minutes, a full 100% graphics use. And then we get this little dip, but it still stays fairly flat right here. And comparing the two, you guys see that big difference there, and that gave us 20% more performance by just installing those. And now look at this. This is in the clamshell mode where we lost almost half our performance. And just by adding thermal pads, now we have that massive difference right there. It is insane. Believe it or not, that is a performance difference of 65% just sitting there on your desk in clamshell mode. But if that wasn't enough, it gets crazier. Look at this. Here's our clamshell mode of thermal pads. And this right here is using the heat block and the fan along with the thermal pads that will transfer that heat better to this source. Look, we go from this insane drop, thermal pads alone make it better, but it does start to heat up. And now we have a completely flat line perfect performance across the board. This is incredible. And comparing that to our MacBook Pro, that has 98.1% stability compared to 99.5. Our MacBook Air is now beating out the 14 inch MacBook Pro that's thicker, heavier, and has a fan. Now I also tested out Cinebench, which takes about 15 minutes to go through two runs. And here's our original result from our comparison to the MacBook Pro. And in that test, you could see how quickly the MacBook started to drop its performance with the wattage and the actual clock speed also dropped to meet the efficiency cores or get even lower. With just the thermal pads, after over five minutes, you guys could see that the wattage and performance started to drop, but we're still over 15 watts. And then after the full run, which takes about 15 minutes, you guys can see even at the end there, we were staying at roughly 14 watts and our performance was still higher than the efficiency cores. And our end result was 644 points beating out the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And that is just with those thermal pads. 
But when we also use our laptop cooler, look at this right here. The whole run, we are at roughly 20 watts. That's better than the MacBook Pro. And our performance cores were staying flat at the perfect highest performance it can get here. And our end result is 668 points, beating out the 14 inch MacBook Pro while staying cooler as well. Well, that is crazy. Now, I also wanted to test out Lightroom, and Lightroom will use both your CPU and GPU, not just one or the other. And the MacBook Air does this so quick that it doesn't heat up too much. Takes one minute and 11 seconds for 50 photos. Now, the MacBook Pro does the same task in a minute and six seconds but our upgraded MacBook Air does this in a minute and four seconds, and that is crazy. Now, of course, this is 50 photos. It doesn't take that long, so it doesn't heat up that much, so I decided to do a test with 500. You would expect this to take about 10 times longer, and with the 14-inch MacBook Pro, it actually takes a little bit longer than 10 times for 10 times the photos, but with the 15-inch MacBook Book Air, it took 20 minutes and 44 seconds. Yes, practically twice as long as the MacBook Pro with the same exact specs. That is insane, and that is just because it gets so dang hot. After just over a minute, you could see right here how our performance is going down and we're running at 12.8 watts because of how hot it's getting and our performance cores, instead of running flat like it should, just is going down so fast. And then switching to the two minute mark, just after two minutes, we are kind of recovering a little bit here on the wattage, but performance just keeps going down. And then after three minutes, look at this right here. It just flat lines down here and our performance cores literally drop all the way down to 1.26 gigahertz. That is sad. And then at the nine minute and 30 second mark, um, that's getting closer to when this would be finished. Look at this five watts, the performance is so low right here. Look at our performance cores just struggling to try to maximize what it could do because the whole laptop is just so hot now that it has to cut down the power. And then when we are almost done here, you guys can see there's our efficiency cores. They're doing most of the work and our performance cores are just so slow, barely running from zero watts and then jumping up to one and back and forth. This is literally using less power than you will get on your iPhone. So now what do we get with our upgraded MacBook Air? Well, instead of taking over 20 minutes, it did it in nine minutes and 42 seconds. Yeah, that is more than twice as fast. And it actually beat out the 14 inch MacBook Pro by over a minute for this photo export. That is crazy. Not only is it staying cool, but it is incredibly fast, faster than the thicker and heavier MacBook Pro. Now, of course, not everybody's gonna wanna do one of these solutions. You could choose what you wanna do. Do you wanna just go with the thermal pads or do you wanna have a desk set up with a cooler or combine them? But if you want to get a thin and lightweight MacBook with a large screen that's cheaper than with the MSRP on the 14 inch, and when you want to get really serious work done, long work at your desk, you could have the best of both worlds. So the M3 chip is powerful, but in the system, it could very be very limited but you don't have to just deal with that compromise. You can upgrade it. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.